A while back, I was asked to review a code case that came in and uh, the ultrasound that was performed. So I'm going to go through that case today with you and describe some things that were a little bit difficult for the providers to discern during that uh, encounter. And so hopefully this will be helpful to you if you ever see this in the future. So I'm going to start by playing the video for you, letting you kind of get a view of what's going on. And then I'm going to break down the images so that it may help you to better uh, catch, uh, understand what's going on here and to possibly be able to interpret this in the future because it's not as easy and clear cut as, um, as we would always like it to be. So one of the first things I'll say in this image, there's a lot of wasted space um, in that the depth is really deep and this might have been a little bit difficult for them to interpret the images and maybe that's why it was left too deep. But I would really um, encourage you to decrease that depth. Only see that pericardial sac if you're doing a cardiac ultrasound um, in any situation. But if you can in a code, that may help you to be able to interpret better what's going on. So as we look at this image, it can be a little bit hard to tell what's going on with the heart or to tell the structures of the heart. So we're going to walk you through that. And what we see here first, I'm going to zoom in to about the depth I'd want to be, and we're going to see the left ventricle right here. Now it's a little bit hard to pick that out, and I'm hoping that as I go through this image here and then play the video at the end, you'll be able to see each of these. So right there we see the left ventricle, and we can actually see the chamber of the left ventricle. There's some anechoic space there. Now this heart is not beating. That's what can make this very difficult, and they were fanning trying to discern what's going on with the heart. Um, but this, uh, when you watch the video, watch for that area and you can see where the left atria and left ventricle chamber want to be. So since we see that, the left atria is going to be just uh, in this area. Once we know where the ventricle and the atria are, we can discern or tell where the uh, other ventricles are going to be. And what we see here is that the right ventricle is really, really small and uh, collapsed down. And that's going to be right in this area with the atria uh, just above it with some uh, fluid in that chamber there too. Now here's where it gets a little bit difficult. So we have the heart, now that we're able to see that uh, a little bit more, um, we start to uh, try to interpret what's going on around it. And what we can see back here posteriorly is an effusion. And I've drawn that up in black so you can better appreciate where that is in relation to the heart. Now that's around the left ventricle. So still, you know, can we intervene or can we do anything else and will chest compression still help this patient that is receiving active CPR? And I'm going to walk you through here. What we see right here is the uh, pericardium up here. And this can throw a lot of people off because it can be easy to not realize that just thinking that pericardium is right along that right ventricle and right atria. But that line drawn in there is the pericardium, pericardial sac. And so what we know is that above that pericardium, when we're doing a sub xiphoid, which is a typical approach in resuscitation, that that's going to be liver. But that leaves us questioning, what is this space in between the heart and that pericardial sac that has echoes in it? A lot of times we get stuck on interpreting uh, only pericardial fluid as being uh, black, and this one's throwing us a little bit off here. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of draw in where we estimate the pericardial sac to be. And we'll see that that's continuous with the effusion that we have down below. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit so you can see that there's some echoes in that area. And then we're going to assume that the rest of it looks similar to this. And what we end up having here is a hemopericardium with clot formation. So in a medical code, this is really concerning. Um, this could be a number of things, um, but what comes to the forefront of my mind in this individual that's a medical code would be um, probably like an aortic dissection that's uh, come back or done retrograde back towards the heart, or even in a thoracic aortic aneurysm. Unfortunately, in my opinion, I don't think that there's anything else you can do to resuscitate this patient. If a medical code has a hemopericardium with clot formation, there is um, more issues going on than just the heart not beating, and, and I don't think you're going to restore that. This is a pretty unlikely um, resuscitation given that uh, you have bleeding within the pericardial sac that's probably led to the demise of your cardiac activity. And so in this video, we can see that they're fanning, trying to discern what's going on with the heart, where the chambers are. And like I said, this can be difficult. Hopefully the drawings helped you to be able to interpret that a little bit better. We can see in the middle, we can see flickering or shimmering within the chambers, um, the area where blood would be. 
that's probably blood clotting and having uh, a little of that going on. Do not misinterpret that as cardiac activity. That is not cardiac activity. Uh, all of these signs on this uh, ultrasound are incompatible with life. Um, I'm going to zoom back out so you can see that. And unfortunately, uh, the individual that this occurred to uh, did not survive this injury. And um, I don't think that there's much else that could have been done as far as resuscitation efforts. So hopefully you're not running into this, but if you do, take a second to look at it. Um, this is a good example of that clot formation within in the ventricle. I hope you found that educational and helpful. Uh, if you're doing point of care ultrasound, I think this is a good case that's not always easy to tell what's going on given the amount of pathology. If you have any questions about this uh, case, please comment below and I'll, I'll try to respond to those. If you have other questions about point of care or ultrasound related questions, feel free to email me at gmail.com. You can also follow me at, uh, on Twitter at PocusGeek where I uh, occasionally tweet some things but also retweet other good educational content out there. Um, I hope this was helpful. Take care.